Coming up on the show, a wireless network scanner that works under Windows 7, Windows VPN tricks, and saves sysadmins from pulling their hair out utility of the day. All that and more on this episode of Hack 5. This episode of Hack 5 is brought to you by GoDaddy, Squarespace, Gamefly, and viewers like you. All right. Well, hey there, and welcome to Hack 5. My name's Darren Kitchen. I'm Shannon Morse. And I'm creeped out. But I like creeping you guys out. It's, you know, a little weird you out, do some unorthodox stuff like I'm going to be doing on the show today. You succeeded. Yes, thank you. I will be um, making some uh, sysadmins creeped out as well as soon as they see the crazy stuff that I've done to Windows and VPNs. And it's, it's a hack like duct tape and, and twine, not a hack like Ule Andrew Network. I like uh, used paper towel rolls and duct tape. Okay. You can make binoculars out of those. No, for reals? Yeah. No way. I don't know, but I'm going to try. Mm. Okay. Yeah. What about you, Snobs? I have a short little tease for you. Okay. I'm doing something kind of cool next week. Oh, that's true. We have parts on order. I love yes. it when we have parts on order. I'm excited. Cool. Uh, Getting root. Yeah. I am showcasing a uh, wireless network scanner that works in Windows 7. And it's also a precursor to some greater and much bigger things that some we're going to... Spectrum fun? Ooh. Yes. I love Sounds spectrum fun. fun. Yes. yes. Um, but yeah, I mean, it's a very systems-focused episode, so let's go ahead and kick it off right and find out what is up with our uh, utility dealies. When it comes to moving a bunch of junk from one place to another, you've heard us sing the praises of Roadkill.net's Unstoppable Copier. But what happens when it comes to those two places that should have been identical if something weren't amiss? And that's why this week we're showing some love to WinMerge. This open source light compares the contents of two folders and gives you reports showing you what's amiss and offering a simple fix. It gets bonus points for being free, fleshed out, and full of keyboard shortcuts. With Squarespace, you can build beautiful looking blogs or websites in a fraction of the time it would take with a traditional content management system. Their intuitive drag and drop interface is as snappy and powerful as a desktop publishing app. But best of all, there's no software to install, no databases to configure, no patches to apply, and no code to fiddle with. Find out for yourself how simple and powerful it can be with a two week free trial at squarespace.com. And use promo code HACK5 to support the show and save 10% off the life of your service at squarespace.com. So today I'm going to be showing you guys a tool that I found born out of necessity. Uh, much like all the other tools that you guys have in your briefcase, uh, in your pocket drive, whatever you want to call it. Uh, today we're going to be taking a look at a uh, Wi-Fi finder. Um, that I needed to use in Windows 7. Now I'm using the release candidate, uh, however that doesn't matter because even on the RTM that I found, NetStumbler, which was last updated about five or six years ago, no, five years ago? Yeah, five years ago, doesn't really work well under Windows 7, let's just put it that way. So what I did is I went on a hunt for a network scanner that worked under Windows 7. And what I found was called Insider. Now Insider is made by a company called Metageek. Uh, Metageek.net is the place that you can go to download the software for free. Now it's really just a stripped down version of some of their other, pro other products which are called channelizers. Now Metageek specializes in Wi-Fi channel range frequency spectrum analysis. Um, it doesn't show it here um, but this t utility is strictly for finding, locating, and uh, seeing what is on or around you in terms of wireless networks. Now the reason that I like this utility better than NetStumbler is it gives me a nice um, arc of channel um, you know, interference and things like that. Like if I'm on channel 4, there's a little bit of fall off between channel 3 and channel 5. Now I can visualize that here uh, in the software. So. Coming back to it, uh, we can see here that Hack5 is currently sharing the same channel as two other networks. One of them is Guyville. I don't know who that is. 
uh, and the other, uh, it just disappeared. Um, but, um, and then Linksys and Nancy PC Network are also sharing the same channel. Now, if we wanted to take this and deploy it in a practical scenario, we could say, there's nothing around channel 12. Let's take a look at channel 12 and see if we can get some better reception without the interference of having competing uh, access points on the same channel. Now, taking that a step further, what we can do is we can come over and actually purchase some products from MetaGeek. And these products are called the Y Spies. Uh, utilizing Y Spies, uh, they come in uh, varying uh, channel ranges, uh, whether you want to transmit or just receive. Uh, they come in 2.4 gigahertz as well as 5.5 uh, gigahertz for wireless N and things like that. And we can actually generate things like 3D views uh, of the spectrum analysis of the range of megahertz or gigahertz that we want to actually take a look at. So coming here, we could actually see that we've got a 900 megahertz uh, spectrum scan, and it is now uh, visualizing a 3D graph of that. Um, coming down here, we can actually see the spectrum analysis for uh, pretty much what the insider utility is showing us, but we can actually see uh, what frequency ranges that there are actually covering in and things like that. Uh, I put a call into MetaGeek to see if we can't get a unit to test and highlight for you guys because there's some really interesting stories uh, and uh, graph results uh, that, uh, that they have online that you can take a look at and utilizing the Chan uh, Channelizer as well as the Wi-Fi uh, Spy utilities we could take a look and see if our cordless phone is interfering with our wireless signal, if things like our microwave are interfering with our wireless signal, anything uh, that the spectrum analysis really goes uh, above and beyond what you're going to find just by searching out other access points. Uh, hit me up if you have any questions, matt at hack5.org, forums at hack5.org, uh, or just head over to metageek.net and uh, find out for yourself. Right now, Shannon's going to come in and tell us what's going on with this month's LAN party. This month's LAN party is Team Fortress 2 and we'll be playing on Saturday, October 3rd at game.hack5.org. Make sure to sign up and vote for all the future games and make sure to join our Steam group over at hack5land.squarespace.com. And now we would like to thank our LAN sponsor. Keep your personal information away from spammers, hackers, and your crazy ex-roommate. Private domain registration from GoDaddy.com protects your privacy by keeping your address, phone number, and more out of the public database. Check out revision3.com slash GoDaddy for all of our GoDaddy codes and offers. Tonight I would like to share with you an IT horror story. And it begins with a hard-coded 192.168.1x office network. And I don't even want to get into why it's hard-coded or why it's not going to change anytime soon, but suffice it to say, that's the bane of my existence. Also, the need to implement a VPN, and I know what you're thinking, there are no fancy routes that are going to fancily route the fun happiness that you need when your corporate network's on a 192.168.1.1 whatever, and your home users who are connecting on their little Netgear Lynx's home network dealies on the same subnet. So what are we going to do? Well, it's not optimal, but it works. Mind you, there's no money to throw any hardware at this solution, so we are going to do some ghetto systems administration tonight. So let's take a look at what we are working with. I have two servers set up here, and this one right here in the red is uh, salt.hack5.org. I am just going to mock this up here on our network at home at the Hack House, and you can see that I actually have a little Active Directory going on. Let's take a look. we got some users and all that fun stuff and we've got a routing remote access server so we can actually accept VPN traffic and that's kind of important when you're trying to put together a VPN. This is just about the easiest way to put together a VPN and if you guys are interested in more of this stuff trust me I have a bunch more fun stuff that involves open VPN later for the open source crowd. Now let's come back over to our other server. This right here is our boring accounting server of boringness, right? Might be running Tomcat and it's uh, not that exciting. Well, let's take a look here. Oh, great. Well, so the, the, pretend this 10.10.0 is actually a, the 192 that I am loathing, and we're going to realize that we don't have a lot to work with here. We need to get both of these on that new shiny happy network. And if we take a look at the VPN server, you can see that I've already set up part of that with the VPN server, and that is the 172.16.85 
100. That address is there because we've actually set up this VPN server to give out a static address pool of 172.16.85.100 to 172.16.85.249. Hooray! Now, if we can get all of our clients on here and we've got our one server on there, we're almost there, except we've got all these other boring servers that we need to also connect. And that's where this little tweak is going to come in. Uh, so let's take a look at how we will go ahead and connect these two bad boys together. So I'm on my boring server of boringness here, and I'm going to head over to my networking. And we'll create our new VPN connection just like we normally would. And VPN, that'll work. 10.10.0.118 is the IP address. And we're not using a smart card. And we're going to say finish. There we go. And I've actually already created an account here on the server in users and computers. It is boring server. I'm going to reset its password to um, hooray. So let's come back over to our boring server and log in. We're going to save that. We'll hit up properties. We'll go to the networking. We'll make sure that it does not become our default gateway under advanced and TCP IP. We're also going to uncheck the prompt me and we're going to tell it to redial 99 times every 10 seconds if it does get dropped, but don't drop for any reason. Verifying username and password, we are connected and we can see we have that new IP address. Hooray! But this is not going to happen every time that the computer turns on and that's kind of important. And I've seen stupid little tricks where you just like throw it in the startup thing, but it's a server. It, you know, things happen, it reboots, whatever. We need this to happen every time the, the uh, server starts, we need it to connect to this VPN. So there are a couple of uh, ways to go about this, and I'm going to demonstrate one of these here, and that is using RAS dial in a fun little option here. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look at RAS dial. So RAS dial is a command that allows us to uh, connect and disconnect and whatnot, manage our dial-up connections. And when I say dial-up connections, I mean like, you know, VPN dial-up, right. So let's RAS dial slash disconnect and we're not on our VPN server anymore, hooray. And remember that the profile is called VPN here. I'm going to run RAS dial VPN, because that's the name of it. Uh, boring server is the username. Our pretty lame password that we set up. And we're connected. So now that we know that we can actually script our dialing of the VPN, uh, let's go ahead and turn that into a service. Now, Matt talked about, I think in season four, ways to do this um, for letting people use like Fire Daemon or something Daemon that allows other people to manage services. And we talked about inserve, I believe. Uh, that won't work so well with this. What we're actually going to end up using is a cool tool from the Microsoft Resource Kit called Auto XNT. It's kind of like Auto Exec.bat, but as a Windows NT script. So let's take a look, or service, if you will. So let's take a look at that. Now, AutoXNT and its buddies live here in the Resource Kit Tools folder. And we actually need to copy it, as well as a few of its friends, over to the System32 folder. OK, and now that we're in System32 and we have our batch file here, it's just a matter of installing the service. So we run inst EXNT, install, and I'm going to give it slash interactive as the switch. And there we go. We have successfully installed the service. If I come over here to my services and refresh, you can see there's a new service listed, auto XNT. I'm going to give it some properties, love, and tell it, yep, want it to be automatic. And if I start it, you'll see that I am now connected to the VPN. This will happen every time it connects. Now, there is something to note here, and that is that I initiated this as the administrator, the user that actually created this, uh, this profile. Remember, rastyle.exe just tells it the profile. I'm not giving it all of the parameters, but how does it know the profile? Well, that is actually stored here in Documents and Settings, and I'll go ahead and pull this up. So this PBK file here, this RAS phone PBK, if I actually take a look at this in something like Notepad, you'll actually get an idea of what is 
stored in here. And these are all of the parameters that specify my VPN. Well, this is in the admin folder. And what's going to happen here is that this service is going to run as the local system, not as administrator. So it's just a matter of copying this raspphone.pvk file from documents and settings, administrator, application data, Microsoft Network Connections PBK over to documents and settings backslash all users and then the rest of it. Um, so that is how you get a server to connect to a VPN every time it boots and now we don't have to deal with that nasty IP issue as long as everything is always connected to VPN and it's I'll be honest, it's not optimal, but it works. And so anyway, if you guys have questions about this v VPN stuff, go ahead and email me, Darren at Hack5.org, or feedback at Hack5.org. And of course, I'm always trolling the forms at Hack5.org. Anyway, we are going to go ahead and find out what's going on this week in the contest. I am doing horribly. So this month's contest is for the scatterbrain and deliciously design-conscious desktop users. Share your desktop at hack5.org slash screenshot and be entered to win a copy of Ashley Swartow's Hackers Are People Too. Contest submissions will be judged based on their epicness. And now we want to thank this month's lovely contest sponsor. I want to let everybody know that Gamefly is an amazing service. They are the largest online video game rental service and offer a choice of over 6,000 new and classic titles across all consoles and handhelds. With plans starting at $15.95 a month, Gamefly members can rent one to four games at a time and keep them for as long as they like. You can also purchase a game if you fall in love with it. They'll send you the box and the manual for a nominal fee. Head on over to Gamefly.com hack5 to get two-week free trial membership. Gamefly.com slash hack5. All right, so Darren, uh, I have to give you mad uh, props, I guess I should say, for the duct tape that is your <laughs> network now. And, you know, it, it's kind of fitting that I'm ex elaborating on why you need to correctly implement and renumber and re-architect and all this other stuff, your network, and you just really don't give a crap, dude. <laughs> no, it's not, no, it's not that at all. Dude, trust me, I would love to. How much did you just write a check for? A re-IP costs nothing. Mm. Nothing. Mm. Nothing. Actually, we have this thing that's hard-coded, and it's nasty. And you know how much it would cost to have that rewritten? Anyway, this uh, it's not worth getting into, but I should probably like put it on some bastard subnet and, and do something with it. It would probably help. Maybe a little tunnel action with some VLAN. Because that would be better than having all of your servers connect to the VPN over... Yeah, like the VPN server doesn't connect. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's a joke, right? But, hey, you know, you, you can use that same... What I taught you there in that segment can be applied to many other things. I mean, you now know about the RAS style and about the service thingy, and it doesn't have to be together. You can yeah. use them independently for good, not evil. Yeah, that's true. I guess we have no choice but to trust you in the fact that it works. It works, and... When you've got no money. So, so do you want to bet how long it takes before it actually screws up? Or do you think that, I mean... Uh, no, because the moment you do, you jinx it. So Because eventually, you know, when water enters the sticky side of duct tape, mm -hmm. duct tape no longer sticky. So, I'm just saying. That's all I'm saying. Shannon, um, <laughs> you've got... She's got this evil grin on her face. Yeah. She knows that she's got parts on order that are going to be epic. What yes. Um, so I figured out that there's a way that you can actually get into the bootloader of the Kindle. Which is what we were talking about a couple weeks ago. Hey, yeah. yeah, you're right, because we were talking about Grub. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like Grub. It's, um... Y is it U-Boot or Bootman or... U-Boot. Cool. Da das Boot. Das Boot! <laughs> <laughs> I'm there! Like <laughs> Either way, I'm going to wire it up and be able to boot into it using putty. And yeah, I finna das. Hey, good times. Mm, we'll be fun. Quiet as yeah. y'all. All right, well, you know, that's what happens. <laughs> See. So all right, that's so. what I'll hopefully be doing next week. Excellent. It's kind of like the pineapple, you know, when you get the root on it with mm -hmm. the tapping right into yes. the. I love it when hardware manufacturers put 
those pins on their board and just uh, love you to just nice and easy to get to. Yeah, I can do well, I have to get to it somehow. Huh? Huh? Yeah, you're right. I guess they do when they build it. There you go. So, hooray! That and JTAG. Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. Indeed. All right. Well, uh, without further ado, we would encourage you to, as always, trust your technolist. I like got my flippy flappies. One of these days I want to like work a move into like into commercial. Dude, there's a shot in that video which makes me cream my pants every time I see it. It's where you love me a man's butt. <laughs> no. The where the rapper is like just standing there and then the camera slowly pans and the helicopter comes into view. Oh, it's like slow motion. It's like dope ass. I was like, I need a shot like that for the show. <laughs> Let's just rent the helicopter. Yes, let's. Share your desktop at hack5.org slash... I did it again. Share your desktop at hack5.org slash... Shut up. Share your desktop... <laughs> All of you, I hate you. Wait.